All right, in this lesson, we are going to look at SimInfo, which is short for Symbol Info. So let me type out SimInfo and then a full stop, control space or command space on a Mac. Here we have all of our built-in variables for our symbol data. So let's start with the first one, base currency. That is literally just the first currency in your currency quote. So um, if I click on that and then control click on base currency, you can see the description here. Base currency for the symbol. For example, the symbol BTC USD would return BTC. BTC is the base currency. The next option is just regular currency. That is the quote currency or the second currency in your pair. So in the BTC USD example, this would say USD. Let's look at the next one, which is description. So the description for this built-in variable is very helpful. It's the description for the current symbol. Um, let's draw this onto our chart so that we can actually see what it is. To do that, I'm going to use the, let's use a label. I think that'll work fine. Let's go if bar state dot is last label dot new and we'll just say the x is the bar index and we'll put it on the high of the current price and we'll set the text to siminfo dot description. If I save the code, hopefully this works. Oh, I need to get rid of this first. Whoops, save my script. There we go. So that's the description for this currency pair. Let's jump over to Bitcoin, see what that says. Bitcoin just says the ticker, ticker ID. Um, let's try uh, CL. Let's go to crude oil futures. There, crude oil futures continuous current contract in front. So that's the description of the symbol you are currently loaded onto your chart. Let me bring this to the front. Uh, jump back over to, let's go to pound dollar for a second. So for now, let's comment out this. And if we need to display any more symbol text, we can uncomment this code and overwrite this text parameter. But for now, I want to look at siminfo.min tick. This is the minimum tick value for the current symbol. Now, the most useful purpose of this is for something like converting your ATR into a whole number. So I'll show you how to do that using this value. Let's get the current ATR from the ta.atr function, we'll just get the default 14 period ATR. And then let's convert this ATR into points. Uh, first of all, let's plot the ATR. We'll give it a color of color.red. And then we will divide the current ATR by the siminfo.minimum tick value. Let's plot that onto our chart as well. I'll give this a color of color.blue. And let's save the script. So now you can see up here in the top left, we are getting our current ATR value in pips based on the decimal precision of the market we have loaded. And then our blue number is our ATR divided by siminfo.minimum tick. And that gives us 53 as a whole number. So we're on the 15 minute chart here. Um, this red number is basically 5.3 pips is the current ATR on pound dollar on this time frame. So 53 as a whole number is points. So it's 53 points is the current ATR. If we want to get the current ATR in pips as a whole number, we need to divide ATR point by 10. So now if I plot ATR pips with a color of color dot purple and I save my code, we will be getting 5.3 printing on the current bar, and that is the current ATR as a whole number in pips. So that's the most useful uh, purpose of Mintic. That's what I commonly use it for in my scripts. Let's have a look at the next uh, siminfo parameter we have to work with, or variable, which is point value. If I click on that, control click, this will return the current point value for the current symbol. That's also really helpful. Let's just plot it onto our chart, see what it looks like plot it down here, save my code, and it's just one. So a point value on this market is one. Um, as far as I know, I think it's one on every single market. One on Bitcoin. Let's try um, crude oil futures again. Ah, here we go. So the point value on crude oil is 1,000. So to be honest, I'm not sure what we'd use 
point value for. I've never used it in my scripts, but if we encounter a use case for this variable, I'll show you how to use it. But for now, if you um, have a reason to need the value of one point, uh, this is how you get it using the siminfo.point value. Let's have a look at the other ones really quickly. Uh, next, we have prefix. So prefix is the prefix of the current symbol name. So it's basically your um, exchange or broker. So if I cut this out and uncomment our label code and paste that siminfo.prefix into here, this will say nymex uh, on a label. So let me save my code. There we go. So this is the current uh, exchange or broker we're dealing with. If we load up Bitcoin through Coinbase, it will say Coinbase. If we load up Euro dollar through Global Prime, it will say Global Prime. So this is the prefix of your symbol. So for example, if I wanted to load up Oanda colon Euro dollar, there we have it. And that is the prefix of the current market. So this would be useful for loading um, data from another market where you want to be specific which exchange data feed you get that um, data from. Um, but we'll cover that later in the course when we get to accessing other market data and other timeframes. Next up we have root. Uh, I'm not sure what this does. It returns the root for derivatives like futures contracts. Um, so let's save this script and see what we get here. Just euro dollar. Let's load up a futures contract. See what that looks like. Uh, okay, so it just says CL instead of the ticker name or ticker ID. Uh, this is the root commodity or market that you have loaded onto your chart. So let's have a look at some other futures we have to work with. Let's try the E-mini. Um, I'm guessing when we click on this that the label will change to ES, which is the root symbol. And there we go. So that's how you get the root for futures contracts. Uh, let's see what else we have. We have session. Uh, so this is for returning the type of market data you have on your chart. So let's go to Apple really quickly. If I change my chart settings to, yeah, here we go. Under symbol, we have session option here. So I could select extended hours and that will show the extended hours. And now it's telling me that this bar is within an extended hours session. So that's what this siminfo.session is for. Let me turn those extended hours off and look at the next variable, which is ticker. So if I click on ticker, save the script, we will be getting our ticker ID up here, Apple, as a string. Now ticker ID will return the current uh, market ticker that I'm on, including the exchange. So if I save uh, this, it's now displaying uh, which exchange that our data feed is coming from, bats colon Apple. So the ticker ID is a little bit more detailed. Ticker just returns the market you're on. So if we go to Bitcoin, for example, Bitcoin, let's go to Bitcoin USD through Binance this time. Um, and if I plot the siminfo.ticker onto my chart, we'll get BTC USD. If I throw an ID, we'll get Binance in front of that. So it's telling us what data feed we want the ticker to be retrieved from, the ticker data. So again, this is useful for accessing other markets in our script using the security function, which we will get to in a future lesson. But let's look at what else we have here. We have time zone and type. So let's throw time zone on and see what that looks like. So the current time zone is just UTC time uh, for this market. Let me load up a different market, see if that changes. Let's load up Euro dollar. Yeah, this one is based on New York time since it's a Forex market and New York is kind of the headquarters for Forex trading. It's where most data feeds uh, will be anchored to the American New York time zone. So that's what time zone is for. The final parameter here, variable, inbuilt variable for our siminfo list is type. So this will tell you what type of market you're on. For this current market, it's going to say Forex. Forex, if I load up Bitcoin, it will say crypto. If I load up Apple, it will say stock. There we go, stock. Um, and if I load up a futures contract, it will say futures. And you get the idea. If we load up a CFD, it will say CFD and so on. So that's what siminfo.type does. And that brings us to the end of this lesson. 
Uh, we will be using SimInfo, not super regularly, but I'll definitely have a few examples in future scripts that we build, especially when we get to the automation section of the course, where we need to send some of this symbol info to a third party API so that it can execute trades on our behalf. And so it knows which markets we actually want to trade. Anyway, that will do it for this lesson. I will speak with you in the next one.